Hi, I'm Elga Wimmer, the curator of the Chelsea Art Museum and we are here to see the show Abstraction Revisited. Here in front of the painting by Gerard Mosse that is an abstract, uh, almost geometric, minimal painting with light exuding from the painting. So it's a perfect emplacement in between the two front doors. The idea for this exhibition was conceived through the contemporary collection of the Chelsea Art Museum that is evolving around the abstract artists from the 1950s. Jean Miot, Jean-Paul Riopelle, John Mitchell, Sam Francis. And I wanted to juxtapose these artists with younger artists today to show how the dialogue is still so vital and very, very contemporary. We are here in front of a painting by John Mitchell from 1952-1953 and it's a wonderful, very powerful example of early abstract painting of the 1950s. This next painting is by Harry Yu, a young Korean artist and it's particularly impressive because it's one of the latest paintings from 2010. Some works in the show come from private collections as is the example by William Baziot next to me and it comes from the collection of Lucia and Peter Gordon. This painting is a wonderful painting by Lee Krasner who's actually an artist that has been overlooked many times. Her of course notoriously famous husband Jackson Pollock took the limelight. But here is a great example of her abstract art from 1959 called The Messenger and I'm very proud to have this painting from the Lee Krasner Foundation and Robert Miller Gallery. Beautiful show, it's very interesting in the range. I'm delighted to introduce one of my favorite painters, Louis Fishman. We're standing here in front of an earlier work I asked most artists to include in this show an earlier work and a very recent work. There's a tremendous amount of feeling in this painting um, for me. Color is very, very low key, um, but very rich at the same time. The paintings actually included a little bit of the soil from a what was called the Pond of Living Ashes at Auschwitz, uh, from which I gathered a handful of mud muck took back with me to my studio, ground it up with uh, beeswax and then included it in each one of the paintings that I made at, in that series called Remembrance and Renewal. It is my great pleasure to introduce Lydia Donner, one of my very favorite artists in abstract painting and uh, there's a wonderful work next to me a recent work and I would like to ask Lydia to talk about it a little bit more. I use a lot of these diagrams from inside part of cars almost like the intestines of the car and I actually don't drive a car so there's actually like a mystery for me because they're like organic parts of the car but they're related to kind of mechanisms and technology and mobility and aspect of motion and floating, various kind of things floating. So in a way, maybe that is kind of like um, a younger version of Mata. The more contemporary younger artists of today are influenced by film and video and whatever is going on around us, uh, much more than the 1950s, 1960s abstract artists who were much more purists. Maybe have a different type of urgency within this environment than the original generation of expressionism that the urgency was more maybe even mental and carnal. Shall we now talk to Richard Vine, the real art expert, <laughs> editor of Art in America, who will talk to us about abstract art in general and some works in particular. Uh, very struck and very taken by this show, um, in large part because of such a bold curatorial gesture. Um, I think it takes uh, real bravery um, to put acknowledged masters cheek by jowl with younger artists uh, and let them stand up next to each other uh, and to make it succeed, which this show does. Uh, so that this is an art which fundamentally is not about content, uh, least of all about the kinds of things that preoccupy us today, you know, class, race, gender. Um, it's about what used to be called significant form um, and beyond that 
uh, a pure kind of contemplative experience that the viewer has in front of a work of art. Thank you so much. I chose an early piece of Jean's that is called Incendiaire from 1952 and a later one, Sans Titre, from 2001. Evidently there is an evolution, there is a lot of things to talk about my painting. I'd like to introduce Martin Friedrichs, Assistant Director of Hollis Taggart Gallery in New York who kindly lent us a wonderful Theodorus Stamos and Sam Francis for this show. This wonderful application of paint in the manner that is typical for Stamos, thin washes, he doesn't work with a lot of heavy impasto, he works with thin, clear understanding of how pigment fuses with canvas, um, these very interesting layers of paint that give you a much more muted approach than what you might expect from an abstract expressionist painter. Stamos was never afraid of color. The very beautiful, vibrant Sam Francis from 1980, a real jewel. When you look at Sam Francis, you always immediately know it's Sam Francis. You have these wonderful splatters of color, you have thick incrustation of paint sometimes, you, know, you have sloshes, you have splatters of paint that are clearly intentional. This whole composition is carefully thought out. I would just like to ask Larry to say some words about his work and himself. No, I don't really talk about my work. The color is what makes a great painting, not a subject matter. You think that Dali crucifixion is any good? I don't think so. It's not the person, it's the paintings. You know, when you talk about paintings, you're not talking about people, you're talking about paintings. You know, so if you hate somebody, you like them personally, it doesn't make their paintings any different. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even though we're all influenced by everything that we take in, in the end analysis, maybe even after we're dead, it doesn't matter what you look like or what you said that makes me like or dislike your paintings more than some others. How could it? What uh, Hans Hoffman said, what does it mean? It means what you see. That's what the painting means. Let's get with it. The Chelsea Art Museum, also called home of the Miot Foundation, is at 556 West 22nd on the corner of 11th Avenue in New York City. The exhibition, which is on the ground floor, will be shown through the end of this year, 2010.